The high-priced imported automobile came under the limelight amid China's recent campaign against monopoly in the sectors of LCD panel, formula, and gold. China View has more. China is now the world's biggest auto market. However, imported vehicles sell for nearly three times the amount they sell for in their home countries. Although tariffs have long been blamed for the high prices, experts believe other factors may be at play. A Benz 350 priced at 565,000 yuan, or 92,264 U.S. dollars in Europe, is priced at 1.4 million yuan at a Shanghai 4S shop. The cheapest price for a Benz GL SUV during its launch was 485,529 yuan, but the price is 1.59 million yuan in Shanghai. An additional 30,000 yuan is required if you want to drive the car right away, as the dealer claimed that the vehicles are in short supply. This kind of price gap is not uncommon in China. Land Rovers sell for a whopping 1.18 million yuan, more than three times what they sell for in their country of origin. Industry insiders have given many explanations for the phenomenon. Some complain that heavy taxes have been levied. Others believe it has been caused by short supply and robust demand. But these reasons are not enough to explain the vast price gap. The taxes include the tariffs, consumer tax, and the VAT. Tariffs and the VAT are fixed at 25 percent and 17 percent, respectively. The consumer tax differs from 1 percent to 40 percent, depending on the discharge. For a vehicle with a four-liter discharge, the tax may be nearly one and a half times more expensive than the CIF price, or cost, insurance, and freight price. And still a far cry from the original retail price. 4S dealers have their own complaints. I'm telling the truth. Selling means losses rather than making profits. They claim their profits are rather thin, since some small shops have to borrow money from banks to maintain their capital flow. They sometimes sell cars at a loss in order to cover warehouse costs and bank interest. In fact, the vast majority of the profits go to general agents closely linked to foreign manufacturers. Some general agents even act as wholly owned subsidiaries of the manufacturers. The monopoly came into being after China joined the WTO in 2011 and issued a one agent per brand rule in 2005. This rule requires foreign car makers operating in China to set up their own sales companies to handle the import, sale, and maintenance of their cars in the country. Previously, foreign cars were imported to China by trade companies. The industry rule has not fulfilled its original purpose of protecting domestic brands. On the contrary, it has destroyed market order, broken the rules of their fair play, and violated the anti-monopoly law. Via these sole agents, car makers reap 30 percent greater profits in China than they do globally. Downstream dealers, on the other hand, have to settle for making profits of less than 10 percent. A sales manager at an Audi 4S store told me that the sales volume doubled this year, but their gross profits for the first half of the year were just 0.3 percent. A franchising system has also pushed up circulation costs. Car sellers cannot obtain sales licenses without first paying consulting companies that are affiliated with manufacturers. The practice has been connected with bribery. Car makers forced you to accept a so-called appraisal done by consulting companies. For example, you might have to pay six million yuan for this. The money is not put into the purses of manufacturers on the surface, but the consulting companies are closely linked with CEOs. This is an open secret. The spare parts and components market for imported cars has been monopolized as well. The general agents forbid sellers from purchasing parts through other channels. The agents set quotas so that you have to buy spare parts through them. Gao said foreign car manufacturers have carried out a vertical monopoly that manipulates the downstream distributors of vehicles and spare parts, which runs against China's antitrust law. Auto experts called for an investigation into the monopoly, as well as revisions for the one agent per brand rule. In order to stop foreign automakers from engaging in price rigging, especially in the luxury car sector.